Hello everyone, thank you for checking out today's video. My name is Michael and in this video I'm actually going to be showing you guys a few different ways that we can set up messages and pop-up alerts on ServiceNow. Now we're going to be covering three different ways today. There are more than these three but these are probably the, the three most popular that people use and one of which is going to be the field messages. So I'll be showing you guys how to set those up. I'll also be showing you guys the Glide Modal. So I found a really helpful website that I'll put a link to in the description, but we'll be using that as a reference. And then also alerts. So alerts are um, not recommended by ServiceNow. It's kind of an old way to do things because it's just run through the browser. So you have no control over how it looks. And it, it's uh, probably the least customizable of the three. So as y'all can see here, I have a client script that I set up. I have three different sections of alerts. So we have my glide modal scripts, we have my alert script, and then my field message script. I have those two commented out because um, we're just going to run through each of them one at a time. So you guys can decide what's the best, um, going to be the best method for you. And I actually put these client scripts on a little sample catalog item that we made a few videos ago. So essentially all it's doing is it's just looking to see if add has been selected here on the requested actions field. And if it has, then we're gonna get these different pop-up options. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. This is Glide Modal. And before we even do that, let's go ahead and refresh, and then we'll come back to this in a moment. So this is the, uh, it's on davidmac.pro. I've never actually used his site before, but it looks like he has some different ServiceNow resources on there, and it's very helpful. So he talks about how you can create your own Glide Modals using UI pages, and there's actually some out-of-the-box ones that you could use too. So he just shows some of the, I think this is an out of the box one. So you can see you have a different prompt. So it's asking questions like, are you sure you want to change the short description to fart? So <laughs> it's kind of a, a trolling um, pop-up, I guess. But if you do, then you can see within the code what it's going to do. It's going to set the value of the short description field to that. So you can get very creative with this depending on the option that the user would select on the prompt. Another option is just a standard alert. And again, you can create your own UI page. What this Glide Modal does, it's just essentially embedding the UI page onto the screen for the user. So you can make custom ones. So um, you're not having to use the out of the box ones that ServiceNow has. But you can see this one, this is another, it's kind of like an alert. So it has the exclamation box here and you just put in your text, so the title. So the test title, you can see right here. So you would just set that in the code right here. That'll change the title up there. And then the uh, the title down here. So you could change the alert title right there and then set preference warning to true. So I'm assuming that that would actually give you the option to, um, I don't know what this does, but actually maybe it just changes the the, the image. I'm sure you guys could figure it out. I'm not using this one, so I'm not sure offhand. This one, it just asks you a standard question. If you select yes, you can prompt it to do whatever you want it to do, whether that's to set a field to read only, to set the value of a field. If you want to display another alert, you can. So that's an option too. You also have a confirm, confirm basic. So there's quite a few in here. I don't want to cover all of them, but the one that we're using today, as you guys saw a few moments ago is the glide prompt. So what this will do is when the user types in some text and they hit, okay, it's going to automatically populate that text into one of the fields. Now, this isn't the best use case because what would make more sense here is just if they were to select add, maybe if you want them to select add and they have to provide a justification, then you would just use the UI policy to make the justification field mandatory. So again, this isn't meant to be the best use case in the world. It's just meant to give you guys an idea of what it can and can't do. And then you can use that to um, build it out to your own use case where this would make sense to do something like this. Okay, so again, I just refreshed the page. So if I were to select add, it's going to say, why do you want to add this user? And then it has the justification. So you see, it's kind of a small field too. So you probably don't want to prompt the user for too much text. A justification for this may, may be multiple sentences long, and it would be very inconvenient for the user to like, for example, you start typing and then, you know, the box isn't going to expand. They have to go back and drag their cursor to see where they left off. So, um, you know, you'd probably want to keep this for an answer that would be pretty short, but you could just put, why do you want to add this user? And you could put, because they really 
need to join this group. And then you select OK. And then you see right here, it has a justification. So from that prompt, it just went ahead and grabbed that value and it added it to the justification field. Now moving on to the next one. And you can see here, everything in the code is pretty straightforward. Um, the only thing that was different from <clears throat> David Mack's website is I just wrapped it in the if, uh, the if logic here. So if the new value, if you guys haven't watched my video on client scripts, please do, because uh, this video isn't in scope for me to teach you how to use client scripts. Um, but essentially what it's doing, it's an on-change client script. From that, you go ahead and you select the different field that you want the um, the client script to be picking up the change on. So for us, that's the V underscore requested action. That's the name of this field right here. And then the value of this option add is add right here. So you see, I put that in quotation. So if the new value, and these are the parameters for the on change. So you can do old value, new value is loading control. So we're using new value because it's being changed to add. And if that comes out to true, then what it does, it initiates the new glide modal. It uses the glide underscore prompt, which is an out of the box um, glide modal UI page. And then the, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember all of the parameters here and what they're for, but this last number, that's how wide or how big the glide modal box you want it to be. And then the title, um, you guys saw the title. So that was the title at the top of the prompt. So, and if we go back, select add, why do you want to add this user right here? Why do you want to add this user? So you just change that for preference. That's the title for justification. So that's right here. So if you wanted that to say something different, you would just change where it says justification for set preference. Um, this is the on prompt complete. So if they're selecting, okay, then what it's going to do, it's going to initiate this function and it's going to grab the value that the user is putting in. So it's grabbing this value right here. And what it's doing, it's taking that value and then it's using the G form object, the set value method, and it's checking the justification field. So it's looking at the justification field and then it's plugging in that value from the function. So this value right here that I'm typing in, blah, 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 blah. Then it adds it to this field. Okay. And then GM dot render. So it's rendering. Um, that's what we named our variable when we initiated the new glide model right here. Okay. So that one is good. So let's comment that out. Now let's go to the not recommended way to display alerts. And then actually let me comment out this top part. And this is the least customizable, like I mentioned, and you can't, can't really do much with it. Really. This is all it does. So it uses the browsers, the way the browser displays alerts. So I'm sure you see different websites. If they use alerts, they're always going to look like this on Chrome. You can't modify these. So unless they're using a custom alert to display on their website, um, if they're using the browser version, it's just going to look like this. And it just says you selected the ad option and all you can do is select. Okay. That's it. And then after that alert, I mean, you could always add logic, like, you know, you selected, um, you selected the ad option and then maybe you want to make the justification field mandatory or, um, whatever, make another field, uh, read only. So that would be an option for that. So again, that's the, the, one of the ways that you, you can do it, but ServiceNow does not recommend it. Comment that out and let's go back up here. And this is the field message. So let me save that. And then we'll look at ServiceNow's documentation. Now field messages. So it's exactly what it sounds like. It's going to display a message um, next to the field. And there's three different options that you can select. So you have the, I was just looking at it, info, error, and warning. So they'll display three different colors. So um, info, which one am I using right now? Am I using alert? Yeah, alert's going to be blue. Info is going to be yellow. And then warn. Warning is going to be red. So we can test out all three if you guys would like, just so you can see the difference. So right now we're using, um, this is what the code looks like. So again, same if statement. And then it's G form. 
So the gform object dot show field message. And then when you plug in your parameters, the first one is going to be the field that you want to add the field message to. So the name of the field. After that, you want to add in the message that's going to be displayed. And then lastly, that's going to be the type of field message. So again, you have the alert, you have the info, and you have the warning. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this out. You guys can see what it looks like. And yes, this is kind of how the alert looks like. So it's just a nice little blue box here that lines up with the field. So it stretches out the whole length of the field. And the other ones, it was just info, right? So then we have info, error. Which one am I using? Am I using alert? Oh, for some reason it doesn't even show it on here. Type info or warning. Hmm. So I must be using info, I'm guessing. Let's try, let's see. Let's just switch this to info and see if it's the same. I thought it was alert for some reason. What happens when you go off memory and don't look at the documentation? Yep, so it looks like alert, um, like it was saying here. Type info uh, defaults to info if not supplied. So maybe because alert isn't one of the options, it just defaults to info. So let's try error, see what error looks like. Okay, so error you see is a nice reddish pink that will stand out to the user saying you're doing something naughty, shouldn't do that. And then the next one is gonna be error. So error should be yellow. So let's, actually, I'm sorry, um, warning should be yellow. Warning. It looks kind of it's kind of hard to see, but these are the three options that you guys have um, when it comes to field messages. Okay, everyone. So I hope you found this video helpful. So again, as a recap, the three most popular ways to show alerts for users are going to be glide modals, alerts, and field messages. So I'm sure you guys could find a use case for each of these. Um, to be honest, at my with my work instance, I often use alerts just because I'm. I'm being a little bit lazy, but you've seen that glide modals definitely give you the most flexibility. Field messages definitely make sense as well, especially if you're using on-change client scripts. I find them to be very helpful. But if you're really trying to stop someone, the the alert messages are usually the way that I go. But glide modals, I mean, you've seen you can pretty much make it look however you want if you're building your own UI page. And even the out-of-the-box ones give you quite a bit of, of functionality and uh, customization as well. So again, check the description. I will put links to all the documentation that I referenced. And if you guys found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you on the next one very soon.